talk about an interesting story that's primarily going to be a discussion of how do we look at um, how do we look at linear circuits with dependent sources. This particular circuit, though, is useful because it's a basically a very traditional MOSFET amplifier with resistive biasing for a MOSFET. This is where this is coming from. And it's coming from, assuming I have a kappa of 0.7, fairly high early voltage, as you can tell. Um, and so one could actually, this is like, you might use this to, you know, get gain, small gains, modify gains, and so forth. The interesting part about when you put this together and you do some of the linearized models, it basically turns out into a very nice linear, um, linear circuit equations, linear circuit model that is entirely just dealing with voltages and voltage dependent sources. So that's what we're going to be looking at here and going to talk through. And so, you know, when you look at this particular circuit, um, it turns out you can get a linearized model of the transistor with these two volt voltage control current sources, one related to how the how things play off the gate, one how they play off the source. Because there's a kappa of 0.7, these are not equal. For those who are on the more experienced side of this, you'll realize that the source and the um, substrate are not tied together, source uh, bulk are not tied together. So that's once you get to this point, this is all of this, you know, all of the transistor circuit questions you'd need to think about. And then the question is, I need to be able to solve this circuit. And how do I begin to thinking about solving this very interesting um, circuit with voltage controlled current sources? Okay, so now, now we look at the circuit and say, well, how do I solve this? Well, the first part of it's actually straightforward. Um, I actually took these two uh, 200 kilo ohm and did them in parallel just to put them, just to combine them initially. So just if you're wondering where those came from. And so what I'm looking over here is I basically have a voltage divider. And in fact, because the two resistors are identical, I know that V2 is going to be half of whatever Vn is. So that immediately starts to simplify a few things of this circuit. And, and of course, what you want to do, any circuit that you have, when you can simplify it, it's always good to kind of redraw it. If nothing else, it makes you feel better that now I have a smaller circuit. So always a good thing to do. So we'll take this, and now it looks like this structure with Vn over 2 kilo ohm. Um, and so that's that voltage control current source. I have another voltage control current source and I can build from there. So I look at the circuit and I think this whole region in green, I really would love to just get like a one port of this circuit. So I could really just kind of think through and, and solve this. Well, it turns out that I could just take that as one port. Let me assume that this VN is really just an input current source and we'll work with that later. Uh, to kind of do that substitution and then say, I'd like to be able to say, what is this Norton equivalent? So Norton equivalent meaning I want a current source and I want a resistance in parallel and figure this sort of structure out. Well, a couple ways I could do that. If I want to look at the, um, so if I want to look at what is the equivalent resistance, the easy way is turn off the dependent source and then just solve for whatever that equivalent that actual resistance is sort of that voltage over current so putting a voltage across it and measuring that current and then for doing what is the equivalent norton current source i could just say make that voltage basically go to zero and then look at what is the current that's flowing through that loop well if i were to take that case of the current source flowing the current through the loop let's see i make a connection here which is the sort of orangish light color and I'm looking at what the current is going through here. Interesting thing happens when you actually draw the circuit out because you realize, yeah, I mean, I've, I've got an interesting circuit here with two resistors. And like, okay, how did I come up with this resistor? Well, this voltage is V1 in the intermediate to this node. That means the voltage across from here to here across that resist, from here to here across that source is also going to be, you know, I'm looking at this still going to also be um, a current source that's going to have that voltage across it. So V1 is across that voltage control current source. So it's effectively just a resistor of 700 ohms. And so when I then put the circuit together, this is just effectively a current divider. Probably more very used to a voltage divider, but it's a current divider. Um, gives you the same sort of conversation of like, okay, what current is actually coming through the 10k versus the 700 ohm k and you can actually sort of solve for that ratio it's roughly going to be about 700 ohm over about 10k so there is a sizable divider right because you're going to expect that the current's going to go through want to go through the smaller resistor not the bigger resistor 
So a much smaller fraction goes through here. But that still gives me my current source, and I'm good to go there. For the equivalent resistance, I'm going to actually take this very useful technique of saying, okay, now I'm going to look at the voltage here, look at the current across. But that current is exactly the current that's going through the 10k ohm resistor. So I know what that current NV1 is. So is there some way that I can use that fact to make it a little bit easier in this calculation? And the easy way to do this is just multiply numerator and denominator with V1. When I do that, what happens is then I can actually pull the V1 over I. I know that's just 10k ohm. So I'm looking at what is V over V1. Well, that now can be done with one loop. I can look at one sort of equation, effectively looking at KCL over at this node here. And as a result, I'm going to find that V1 and V have, well, V has this whole bunch of resistors in parallel. Uh, the con effectively, there's a looks like in the computation, a set of resistors in parallel, that's what's going to happen when you look at this one looking up into it. I'm going to get this term for this element and this term for this one gives me really all three of them. I'm not surprised at that. That's still going to basically just be V1 over the smallest of the three, which is clearly the 700 ohms. And then the other term is going to be is going to be the V that comes off the 400K here. And so as a result, I'm looking at this, I'm like, I can get V to V1, and there's a ratio of that. And so as a result, if I look at what this equivalent resistance is, it's going to be 10K ohm that I get here and the V over V1, which is a ratio of 400K ohm to 700 ohm. And so I look at this and I go, great! Now I've actually got my equivalent elements, which of course one gives me a current source here, which now I can see the Vn over 10K and 0.7 over 2. And you're like, okay, um, how to quite get that? Well, um, if you kind of look at the, I'm sort of pulled the 10K here, um, you know, so, so I know that I have a current division that's going to be 700k and 10k ohm, so I was able to just kind of rearrange some terms here to give me effectively what that that value looks like when I'm done here. Um, and I'm bringing this up because for those who actually can see some of the other effects, you can see the 0.7 and you can see the resistor divider. Uh, so those really help uh, when you kind of see what t what terms actually matter when it was all done, and the 100k effectively matters when it was all done. Um, this output resistance is 400k um, times 10 over 0.7, uh, which means this is going to be a very large value, many, many mega ohms. That one in parallel with 70k turns out to be effectively just 70k. Um, 70k point something in the decimal site, we're not going to worry about that. So then it turns out I can just say, well, what is V out of Vn? And this is actually in magnitude, there's actually a negative sign in there, so you would, would, would want to be careful of that. Um, it's very easy just to say what's the magnitude of it. And if I calculate the magnitude, it turns out to be 2.45 is, is actually the magnitude of the gain, but it's an inverting gain. Interestingly enough, somebody might say, well, this comes back to the transistors of a ratio of the resistors. And then I've got a resistor divider, which gives me a half. Then I get a cap. If I were just to multiply those out, what do I get for my number? It's about 2.45. So the, the qualitative sense of this also works, but what I find nice is this gives us a really wonderful practice problem to kind of go, here's a, not only an interesting way to build linear circuit, say, hey, what happens if I take a piece of it, make a one port network of it, and then take that one port network and I see a much simpler circuit um, in terms of analyze and in terms of my intuition for the structure.